Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello. Today we are going to discuss second order EPR spectrum calculation. Earlier we saw how to calculate spectrum up to first order. Now why bother with second order calculation? Because first order calculations gave quite a good interpretation of most of the spectrum that we saw so far, but sometimes that is not sufficient. So, here are the two important reasons. For example, when hyperfine coupling constant is not small compared to the electron Zeeman term, or when there are several equivalent nuclei giving large splittings. In that case, first order calculations are not good enough. So, when you are doing the second order calculation, we will take hydrogen atom as an example and then try to make a distinction between hyperfine coupling and hyperfine splitting constants. Also, try to make a distinction on fixed frequency experiment and fixed magnetic field experiment whether they are same in all respect or not. First order spectrum that we calculated and interpreted earlier gave the same value for hyperfine spreading constant or hyperfine coupling constant there was no difference, but we will see some difference may appear when we do the calculation up to second order. So, let us recapitulate our Hamiltonian for hydrogen atom. This is the Hamiltonian, this is the electron Zeeman term, this is the nuclear Zeeman term, and this is the isotropic hyperfine interaction. And this can be written in this fashion. So, here we treat this part electron Zeeman, nuclear Zeeman, and A S Z I Z as the one part of Hamiltonian, and the other part is treated as a perturbation. The zeroth order wave functions are given as a product uh, states of the electron spin angular momentum component and nuclear spin angular momentum component. Since each of them is half, we get four states plus half, plus half, and this fashion. We, we did all these calculations earlier, and zeroth order wave functions are of this kind, and the zeroth order energy are also of this kind. Then the first order calculation requires evaluation of integral of this kind. Here, this is the perturbation, and these are the unperturbed wave function. For this states here, all these elements are zero. Why? Because these are same for both of them. Now, when this acts on this one, it is going to decrease the value of m i by 1 unit and when this acts on this one, it is going to increase the value of m s by 1 unit. So, effectively this will give something, let us say m s m i times m s plus 1 m i minus 1 and because they are different because of and they are orthogonal. So, this will automatically give rise to 0. So, first order energy calculation is 0 for all the 4 states. 
So, these four states are also good wave functions of first order and energies are also good up to first order. To do the second order calculation, this is the expression for the second order correction to energy. Here the kth state kth is one of the four states they this energy involves this row integral. Here psi k is this k and then some over all possible other states which are there other than the k and this is the difference of energy between the k and j state. So, for this to be non-zero this integral must be non-zero. So, here again so if you put a prime here to indicate that they are different this will be non-zero when after raising this this will be something like m prime s plus 1 and this will be m prime minus 1 this lowers it but this increases. So, for this to be non 0 this must be same as this one. So, that in other words s prime plus 1 should be equal to s m s prime plus 1 will be equal to m s and m i prime minus 1 should be equal to m i. This condition must be satisfied for this integral to be non-zero, which is also written here. If you have the other one s minus i plus, then m s prime s must be equal to m s plus 1 and m prime i must be equal to m i minus 1. So, here not all four states will contribute to the second order calculation. State number 2 and 4 give rise to these sort of values. So, from this expression now, this expression I can calculate the energy uh, correction up to second order and that turns out to be this. This is the second state, second order correction it comes out to be s square by 4 and this factor in the denominator. This is the electron z 1 term, this is the nuclear z 1 term. So, that way I can calculate all the four energy corrections for the four states and you see that state 1 and 3 do not have any second order correction and state 2 and 4 have. This has got plus value, this has got minus value. So, with the second order calculation done, I can now get the total energy up to second order. Here, the, in a, the state 1 does not change, so it remains as it is. Similarly, state 3 also remains as it is, but 2 and 4 get mixed because of this cross term that we have found out here. So, this 2 and 4, I put prime here to indicate that they are not pure state 2 or pure state 4, some admixture is there. So, these are the energy of this 2 prime state or 4 prime state. So, having found these 4 energy levels now we can find the transition energies. These are the transition energies where the m i does not change here also m i does not change and this energy is given uh, for transition from state 1 to 4 this is state 1 to 4 and 2 to 3 this 2 prime to 3 this essentially this 2 prime is very nearly equal to 2 and 4 prime is very nearly equal to 4. So, these are the energies that we get here. This corresponds to m i equal to plus half, this corresponds to m i equal to minus half. So, what we see here? This should, should look familiar that if the second order correction was not applied, energy was this. Similarly, energy was this. So, this is same as the first order splitting the energy level is split equally by plus a by 2 or minus a by 2. But now, when you include the second order correction, both the transition energies have increased by this amount. So, that is something different. So, now we do the experiment now let us say fixed magnetic field experiment.
and afterwards we will see the fixed microwave frequency experiment and see how the spectrum looks like. In this condition, the magnetic field is kept fixed, then the frequency required to cause the transition for the first one, say, this will be given as for the first transition where m s is equal to plus half and second one similarly corresponds to this corresponds to m s equal to minus half. So, the spectrum will look like something like this way, this B0 is kept constant. Fixed. So, this frequency is higher than this one. So, this So, energy is a higher for this and lower for this one because it comes minus sign. So, to get the particular frequency now, I divide this whole thing by 1 by h. Similarly, divide this by 1 by h. So, this gives me let us say nu 1 and nu 2. So, this corresponds to m i equal to plus half, this corresponds to m i equal to minus half. Now, where is the center of this? Now, if this was absent, the center would be just average of this and this. So, somewhere here. So, so this would be G e beta e B 0 by h. Now, the way this appears now, these lines are shifted with respect to center by this amount. So, again if this was absent, I would have got the first order spectrum and then some of the spectrum would have been dotted line here. This is also shifted there somewhere. So, this way uh, the spectrum would have appeared. Now, both the lines have shifted to the higher frequencies. So, the center of the spectrum has now moved towards higher side. So, the actual g value is here, but the way it appears center of the spectrum now appears somewhere here now. So, this is the important uh, outcome of this analysis is that if one blindly looks at the middle of the spectrum and then calculates the g value for this magnetic field, then the answer will be wrong. Because actual g value is here, both the lines have shifted up and that can be understood from this sort of analysis. And the next point is that the difference between this and this, if we take the way it appears, we take difference between this and this then this of course cancels. So, this gap is still equal to A, which is the hyperfine coupling constant. So, this experiment gives the value of the hyperfine coupling constant, though it will not give you the g value correctly unless you account for this correction and find out exactly the correct place of the magnetic field to calculate the g value. Now, let us do a fixed frequency experiment.
let us say nu 0 is kept fixed. So, here in this energy expression I keep the frequency fixed on both sides and find out for which value of V 0 I will get a transition. So, if nu 0 is the frequency which is kept fixed then the energy is H nu 0 and that will be equal to Here let us ignore this uh, nuclear Zeeman term unnecessarily because uh, just making the equation looking ugly, but one could return them if one requires it. Though it is safe to ignore because this term is about 2000 times smaller than this one. So, unless one is interested in a very precise measurement, one might as well ignore this. Okay. Okay. Similar for the second transition, minus half. So, here this is constant. So, I have to find out the value of B 0 for this line and also B 0 for this line. So, we just rearrange the equation and then that will look like this. So, the only difference is here plus minus. So, I am combining these together to write one single equation. this could be further uh, rearranged to give rise to a quadratic equation in B 0. Here again the minus sign corresponds to m i equal to plus half and plus sign corresponds to m i equal to minus half. So, this is the quadratic equation in B 0. So, I can solve it and get the value of the magnetic field for a given value of nu 0. Now, of course, you know the quadratic equation gives two roots. Uh, here only one of the roots will give physically meaningful value, realistic values. So, so let me write that. Here I have taken only the positive square root of this one. Now, this could be simplified by rearranging the term and it will look like this.
So, this uh, pair corresponds to one root, this corresponds to the other root of this two possible transitions that I can get. So, this equation is exact. So, if I put the values now for a given frequency and let us say a known value of the this hyperfine coupling constant, you can get the two magnetic fields. So, since the values are known, let us see what sort of numbers we get. The A in frequency unit is two zero megahertz in frequency unit. So, in other words, A by H is the frequency of this hyperfine coupling constant. So, if we put a let us say uh, some typical frequency for the EPR experiment of the X band say 9.5 gigahertz then you can calculate the corresponding magnetic field for the two transitions if they turn out to be V0 lower lower line corresponds to 3 one one high point nine three gauss and V zero higher corresponds to three two five point six seven gauss. So we get a spectrum which in a sense similar to this, but let me draw it here now. This is this was done as a function of, of uh, frequency. Now, the experiment as a function of magnetic field. So, you get a spectrum which looks like this one is here. Now, this now this corresponds to m i equal to plus half, this corresponds to minus half. Now, where will be the g value? So, if we simply take the average of these two positions, then B average, B0 let us say equal average that turns out to be 3, 3, 8, 0 gauss. But this is see, this is not the resonance position for the g value because both the lines are now moved towards the lower side. So, here knowing that okay, for this I forgot to mention the g value for this is given as change 2 2 yeah, with this g value one can calculate the magnetic field. So, that g value will correspond to this pattern magnetic field which is this is the value that will come out to be if you use this micro frequency and this g value that is the way it is supposed to be. So, you see the difference now the average value is lower than the place for at which I must calculate the g value. So, here in other words here the lines are shifted towards the higher frequency here if the actual g value would be somewhere let us say here these lines both of them have gone downwards. So, if I take the average value of this average may be here. B average. So, 
So, if you calculate the g value at this at the center of this thing, I will again get uh, higher g value. The true g value is somewhere here, both the lines got shifted downwards. Now, to see a little more about this complicated equation, let us try to simplify a little bit by taking the approximate value of this square root, because here these numbers come out okay, but they do not quite throw much light in what is going on inside this one. So, just simplify it such that we un understand at least qualitatively what we are saying here is correct. So, this one I, I can to I can take this common and then write this way. square root here. So, then as a there is a simple the approximate approximation of the square root I can write it in this fashion. So, this is the bottom is 4 g e b. So, And further simplification can give rise to this expression, which I am writing straight away. So, here now it shows that that the magnetic field that appears here with respect to this h nu 0 by g beta i that true center of the spectrum and uh, from there the minus a and plus a that is the ship that is the splitting, but both of them now have gone towards the lower side by this much amount. So, that is what we are saying that the implication of this exact equation there course, this is approximation. So, this cannot be treated uh, for exact calculation. We must use this, but nevertheless it does show how the two lines have gone down. So, second point is that the way again this difference of the two line position is such that they are not same as the hyperfine coupling constant. Hyperfine coupling constant, this if we convert magnetic field in it, this will turn out to be H 6 Gauss. Now, here if you take the difference of these two, the difference turned out to be let me write side by side the difference in line position that turns out to be seven four Gauss. So, this is the observed splitting in the spectrum given by this experiment when you do the hyper experiment here. And this is the intrinsically the splitting because of the hyper interaction is 506 Gauss, what you see here is 509 Gauss. So, this is where one makes the dis distinction between electron nuclear hyperfine coupling that is the strength of interaction in energy unit either right here or this one and this is the electron nuclear hyperfine splitting constant. This one can convert this also frequency unit, but this is a measured quantity that appears in the spectrum in the form of splitting of lines. So, one must really mention what it what it is that one is reporting. In the first order spectrum, these two 
things do not make any difference, they are the same. But once we apply second order correction, this difference is possible and one can see that here it is definitely measurable quantity. This is the second important consequence of the second order cal calculation. First important consequence was that the g value will be absolutely wrong if you simply blindly take the center of the spectrum to be the correct place for calculating the g value. And second one is this. Now, this hydrogen atom this case is very special because this coupling constant is really, really large. And that is not very surprising because for hydrogen atom, the electron is actually in one s orbital and that is the also the main and the principal requirement for forming contact interaction. So, this interaction is very strong and you get such large splitting. Most of the EPR signal or organic molecules and typical hyperphonic coupling constant that one sees, usually this is not of much uh, significant uh, importance. So, one tends to ignore this, but there are cases other than hydrogen atom where this can become important. One is that there could be more than one nuclei coupled to the electron and each of them contributes to you know hyperphonic coupling constant such that overall the effect is large. So, if you have a set of equivalent nuclei, they are coupled together, same simultaneously to the electron and then second order corrections might be necessary. So, here is an example. This EPR spectrum of the C f 3 radical. So, fluorine has nuclear spin of half. So, one would expect that this 3 equivalent fluorine should give a spectrum of this 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. But what it gives is this that this what was supposed to be the intensity 3 is now split into 2 lines. 1 is intensity of unit 1, this is 2, 1 and 2. So, this line is split. Here also the splitting constant is reasonably large. So, to understand that let us take a simpler radical system something like R H 2 radical. So, 2 spin half system which are equivalent and coupling to the electron. So, here we will write the Hamiltonian again in this fashion where we couple the first nuclear spin states to get a total nuclear angular momentum and its component and then that will couple to the electron spin that is the idea. So, here again for simplicity we ignore the nuclear gemon term without serious consequence anyhow that is very small. So, the hyperphone in term we now look like A S Z J Z, J is the component of the total nuclear spin quantum number. So, when there are two nuclear spin total J can be 1 or 0. So, these are the corresponding components 1 0 minus 1 this is for 0. So, now we have 8 possible states they are represented by the electron spin component and nuclear total angular momentum component J and M J. So, that way we get 8 states plus half for electron and 1 0 minus 1 0 for the nuclear spin and similarly again for minus half component of the electron I get another set of 4. Now, we follow similar type of calculation that we have done for this hydrogen atom exactly similar. So, first order energy calculation appears to be this same for all the 8 levels. So, first order spectrum is obtained by following this selection rule delta m j is 0 delta m is plus minus 1 and this gives a spectrum in this fashion 1 is to 2 is to 1 what we of course, expect for this type of radical. Now, when you do the second order calculation these are the states which gives non zero value of the integral and the value is given here and then the second order calculation of energy also are in this fashion the state 2, 3, 5 and 6 they have non zero value of second order corrections to energy and 2 and 3 have positive correction and 5 and 6 have negative correction. So, then using that one can find out the position of the resonance magnetic field and that is the way it will look like. So, here the first order spectrum gave 1 is to 2 is to 1 line position 
and then so if you apply the second order corrections using this set of energies then this three lines will shift towards lower magnetic field and this intensity 2 is split into 2 so of 1 is to 1 and the spectrum will appear in this fashion. So, this of course depends on the value of the coupling constant and the magnetic field B0. If B0 is very large, then this correction is small and this will not be seen. Therefore, not only the coupling constant, but also at what magnetic field the experiment is done. So, if one works at low frequency EPR spectrometer, this effect might become more prominent. In the same way, if one does the calculation for three equivalent spin half nuclei, then the total nuclear spin will combine in this fashion to give rise to total j equal to 3 by 2 and total j equal to 1 by 2, it will appear two times and for each of them the mj values are given here. So, exactly same calculation what we have done here can be calculated and the energy will be split such a way that all the lines will show shift towards the lower magnetic field and in particular this intensity of 3 units will be split into one in intensity of 1 unit one and another in intensity of 2 units and all of them will show downward shift. So, here again the calculation of g value will require special consideration because center of the spectrum does not correspond to the true magnetic field. So, this is exactly what was reported here C f 3 radical. Now, the example that I showed about second order coupling and the splittings, it is possible that one may not see those splittings all the time. Nevertheless, they are there. If the hyperbolic coupling constant is reasonably large or there are many equivalent nuclei which are coupled together to produce a large splitting. So, here is an example for this type of metal complex. It is a trinuclear cobalt complex arranged in this fashion that all three cobalts are equivalent and the EPR spectrum is shown here. So, cobalt 59 I set of has I equal to 7 by 2. So, that will give total I will be 21 by 2. In other words, there will be 22 lines and if one compute the first order spectrum, the relative intensity among these 22 lines will look like this. So, in a sense there are 22 lines though one may not see the extreme end all the 20 lines are seen and they reasonably reproduce this relative intensities. But nevertheless look at this line shape the narrow here and broad there each of them narrow towards the bottom and broad at the top why is that whatever you discussed so far they just cannot none of them explain this sort of line shape. So, here the explanation was that the second order coupling constants or second order splitting constants are actually playing a role here. It so happened that they are not resolved. So, look at that the three cobalt nuclei each of them have got 7 by 2 nuclear spin and splitting constant if you measure from the scale which is typically maybe 25 30 gauss which is not very large, but because so many of them are there the effect can be noticeable. So, this calculation was done of second order and this is the way the result is. So, the first order spectrum predicts the relative intensity of this sort of values. Now, if you include second order calculation then many of this, this degenerate transitions become non degenerate now this is how they appear here bunch of them are appearing everywhere and all of them are shifted towards lower magnetic field. So, the reason behind this unusual line set. So, we saw that second order interactions are important if the hyperbolic coupling constant is large or there are more than one equivalent nuclei present there which are also contributing to a large overall splitting. Then this second order calculation are necessary for an accurate measurement of the g values and hyperbolic coupling constant even to reproduce the 
very unusual line shape of a spectrum where these splittings are not resolved. That is all.